What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we're jumping into Detective Comics issue 1063. In the last issue we saw the new story arc by the writer Ram V get underway. Bringing back a villain that we haven't seen in quite some time. That being Barbados. A character that was more or less thrown to the side when the Batman Who Laughs made his appearance. And then we dived into Dark Knight's death metal, and everything has been spinning out of that coming into Dark Crisis. Now, like all of the other DC titles, most of them take place prior to Dark Crisis. What Ram V is also giving us is the Arkham family. They have returned back here, back to Gotham, to remind this city exactly where it started. Now, make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure you like this video, and with that, that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up with Harvey Dent. The Harvey Dent that is more or less reformed at this point. He has been, you know, quote unquote fixed. When the reality is, the Two-Face persona, it's been suppressed. And Harvey Dent now has control. But on this evening, in this lounge, he is greeted by Bruce Wayne. The two of them sitting down, having a drink, having a discussion. Bruce is letting him know that things have changed. He used to know the things that hid in the shadows in this city. And he knows that there is something going on in the underworld. In Gotham's criminal underbelly. But he is yet to be able to properly put a finger on what it is. Harvey Dent kindly reminding him that he has no part in any of that any longer. But he is curious. Curious on what Batman believes has actually changed in this city. Over the last couple of months, we have had Batman going all around the city trying to figure out who is making all of these power plays. He's broken jaws. He has twisted arms. Strung people up and hung them off the side of buildings. One of them who screamed in delirium, saying something about the wolf. But then he ran off of the edge, jumping and leaping off the building. Before he touched the ground, he had turned into a green ash. All the foot soldiers too scared to say anything, and all the bosses are currently in hiding. But it's not Batman's wrath that they are running from. There is something new in this city. There is a power vacuum going on in Gotham. See, Bruce Wayne didn't come here to just check in on Harvey and see what he might know. He came to ensure that Harvey Dent isn't the one responsible for everything going on. Reassuring Bruce that it has nothing to do with him. He does remind him that Gotham is changing, changing in ways that we could never possibly even comprehend back in the day. The question now is can Bruce Wayne keep up with the changing city? And that's what takes us to a few miles off of Gotham's shore. On the Orgum Royal Sun Skipper, we have the man known as Arzen. Given the land deed to Gotham City, his mother sent him ahead, sent him to Gotham to remind them that this is their city. City, with Arzen having a conversation with Shavhat, one of the more or less goons that have been sent alongside of him to help him do this endeavor. Up to this point, Arzen wasn't really sure that their family had owned all of this at one point in time. But this is when he's given a little bit of a history lesson. That this land, it was purchased and leased in 1692 by a man known as Antotal Orgum. This was some kind of treaty that had been put into place. When Anatole had died, he passed in 1701 and the lease passed on to his kin, a long line of cousins and nephews. And then in 1853, the deed's inheritor, he changed his name. In the interest of protecting his trade activities, he changed his last name to Arkham. And then in the years to follow, the mayorship of Gotham, it grew into a town and then into a city. In 1921, Amadeus Arkham built the Arkham Asylum, the one that bore his name. The question is, after all of this time, why do we return to take ownership? The reason that he was sent here, 
is because somebody blew up Arkham. That was the last symbol that the Arkham family was once here. With Arkham's destruction, it's as if the Arkham family never existed at all. And this is something that his mother will not allow. They are being sent back to remind this city of the Arkham name. To not let this name slip away into mythology. This is when young Arzen, he gets a little bit mad. He gets a little bit heated. Some symbols popping up, glowing on his face. We don't understand the true extent of what he is or what this is. This is when his other bodyguard comes out with the music box. The same music box that Batman had, or at least resembling it. Opening this box up, it starts playing some music, and this calms him down. It brings him down just a little bit, just enough to stop him from going overboard. And this is when we jump over to Batman, trying to figure out the music box that he has. The one that he had got from the docks. That's what brings him to the maestro. Because if anybody is going to know about this, he believes that this is the man to talk to. And though his hearing, it is going out. It is only a matter of time before he can no longer hear any music. And in playing this music box, the maestro lets him know that it plays what is known as black noise. And it is suggested that black noise can cause people to change. That it can be used to change people. That it has the possibility of changing entire societies. Now, if the other music box made Arzen calm down, we can only assume that this music box, it unleashes him. With Batman getting out of here, as he makes his way through the city, this is when something stops him, dropping him down to his knees. And this is when we see Barbados taunting him, letting him know that he has failed, that he has done this for so long and it has gotten him nowhere. That Gotham City, it changes and not for the better. And that very soon, all of the music will end and all that will be left is the lingering name Barbados. This is when we pick up with Harvey Dent, outside of the club, making his way down the alley, taking off for the night. This is when he runs into Gale. Gale Tenclaw, the one that was sent ahead of Arzen, laying the groundwork, getting ready for the arrival of the founding family. Now, he originally came to Harvey Dent because of his reputation, because of the man that he once was. But now seeing him, nothing more than a sniveling pile of the two-face he used to be. He was hoping to have a conversation with like-minded people to bring back Gotham to its criminal glory. Taking out a small vial, what he calls as myrrh. He cracks it open and blows it in the face of Harvey Dent. He is being possessed by ancient beings of wrath and rage. They answer to Ten Claw's call. They will watch his every action. He will know everything that he knows, see everything that he sees. They will also follow his every word, and they will bend Harvey Dent to his will, or they will kill him, because their plan is to put him back on the throne, make him the king of the underworld. As Harvey Dent lays here on the ground, as he comes back to his senses, this is when Two-Face comes about. The voice inside of his head, returning back, letting him know that now Two-Face is his only option. Because while that, that ancient power, it controls Harvey Dent, it only has control of Harvey Dent. It doesn't have control of Two-Face. And so now Harvey Dent has to make the decision to give Two-Face back the power or be the puppet of Ten Claw. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You guys know I am a huge fan of Ram V. He's got that very dark, very gritty drama. If you've been following Swamp Thing, which we are going to be finishing covering that up. I think I think I have like five issues and it's going to bring it to an absolute close. We'll probably end up doing one big video covering all those issues 
reviews all the way up to the final issue number 16. But when it comes to Ram V as a writer, I, I think he is absolutely phenomenal. He 100% understood how to write the Swamp Thing. And I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt when it comes to him being able to write Batman. Especially when it has Barbados coming back into the fold. No, I, I think a lot of readers, some are excited about this, but others are kind of shrugging their shoulders. They're not really sure on bringing this villain back. Especially after he was built up so much and then just thrown to the side because of the Batman who laughs. But if anybody can revive this villain, bring him back into the fold and make him relevant, I truly think that writer is going to be Ram V. Albuquerque giving us the, the dark and gritty artwork that matches Ram V's writing. Story has lots of potential. We're seeing Harvey Dent, Two-Face, come back to the person he once was, while also bringing into the fold some new characters that are attached to the Arkham name. Tons of possibilities, lots of directions, lots of potential. We're really just gonna have to wait and see how all of this unfolds. But so far, it looks very promising. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now, if you can't do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell. And with that being said, until the next breakdown.